Great Britain as Tarshish. New evidence supports the identification of Britain as Tarshish in Bible prophecy. There has long been a theory that when Tarshish is mentioned prophetically in the Bible, it refers to modern day Great Britain. I first heard this theory in the 1990s and have a book published in 1941 entitled Is Great Britain Tarshish? by the Reverend W. Lamb, which also promotes the theory. There have been other places identified as Tarshish, and I was not sure whether to believe this interpretation or not. But recent archaeological finds in Israel have convinced me that Tarshish is indeed Great Britain. Ezekiel chapter 38 tells us of ancient nations that unite under a leader called Gog. You can see one interpretation of who these nations are on the website page about Hal Lindsay. These nations, possibly a combination of Russia, Turkey and Iran, along with some European and African nations, will band together and move to attack Israel at a time just before the return of Christ. There is, however, another group of nations that stand aside from the invasion and protest about it. Ezekiel chapter 38 verse 13 tells us, Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish, with all the young lions thereof, shall say unto thee, Art thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered thy company to take a prey, to carry away silver and gold, to take away cattle and goods, to take a great spoil? Sheba could refer to the Sabaeans, who lived in what are now the Arab Gulf states. Dedan is located in the area we know as Saudi Arabia. So who is Tarshish? Tarshish is referred to in several places in the Bible. The ships of Tarshish are described as belonging to the proud and lofty in Isaiah chapter 2, and the inference is that they will be brought low. Isaiah 60 refers to a time when the nations shall bring their offerings to the Holy One of Israel. Surely the isles shall wait for me, and the ships of Tarshish first, to bring thy sons from afar, their silver and their gold with them, unto the name of the Lord thy God, and to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. This is clearly a re reference to the millennial age when Jesus rules on earth. We see more of this in Isaiah 66, and it seems to indicate that those who have come through the tribulation period will declare God's glory in various nations, including Tarshish. Psalm 72 verse 10 tells us that Tarshish will be among the nations that bring gifts to the king's son, Jesus, in this period. So we can see that as well as being a nation in Ezekiel's time, it is also a nation that exists in the millennial period. There are several clues regarding the identity of Tarshish. Firstly, a maritime power. The term ships of Tarshish occurs seven times in the King James Version of the Bible. Consequently, we can see that Tarshish is a nation that is associated with ships in the sea. Solomon's ships went to Tarshish and traded in goods, but the king's ships went to Tarshish with the servants of Huram every three years. Once came the ships of Tarshish bringing gold and silver, ivory and apes and peacocks. The products mentioned here are associated with India and Africa. One theory is that there was an eastern Tarshish in the Indian region. region. However, Herodotus mentions that Egyptian ships manned by Phoenicians took three years to sail from the Arabian Gulf and return to Egypt, around the coast of Africa and via the Straits of Gibraltar, which means Tarshish could be anywhere on this route. Clearly it was very distant as it was the place Jonah wanted to escape to, to be as far as he could from Israel. Tin, Tarshish, was a source of precious metals. Ezekiel chapter 27 verse 12 tells us, Tarshish was thy merchant, 
by reason of the multitude of all kind of riches, with silver, iron, tin, and leather, that they traded in their fairs. Tin in particular was a rare commodity that was used in the making of bronze. Ezekiel 38. This chapter gives us more information about Tarshish. In verse 13 it says, Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish, with all the young lions thereof, shall say to thee, Art thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered thy company to take a prey? To carry away silver and gold, to take away cattle and goods, to take great spoil. So here we see that Tarshish is known for its merchants. It is a trading nation. Also young lions are referred to. This refers to the offspring of Tarshish, in other words, its colonies. So we see that Tarshish is a maritime power, a merchant power, a colonial power, and a source of metals, silver, iron, tin, and lead. We also know from Genesis chapter 10 that the original man called Tarshish was a descendant of Japheth. The historian Josephus explains that Japheth's descendants colonized what is now Europe. Rams went south to Africa and Shem stayed in the Middle East. Consequently, the nation of Tarshish was a Japhetic people, not Semitic or Hamitic. Tyre. Another point is that the original great trading nation in the ancient world was Tyre. At one point, Tyre was a friend to Israel, but after the fall of Israel and Jerusalem to their enemies, Tyre was glad because it thought it would benefit from the fall of Jerusalem. This was probably because the ruin of a trade rival meant more wealth for Tyre. As it says, as it says in Ezekiel chapter 26, verse 2. Son of man, because that Tyrus had said against Jerusalem, Aha, she is broken, that was, the gates of the people. She is turned unto me. I shall be replenished now, she is laid waste. However, this gloating by Tyre brought on God's wrath, and the rest of Ezekiel chapter 26 is a judgment on Tyre. Eventually, Tyre was completely destroyed by Alexander the Great. The point of interest to us here is that what happened to Tyre after its is what happened to Tyre after its destruction. There is another prophecy against Tyre in Isaiah chapter 23. And we read the following in verses 5, 6, and 7. As at the report concerning Egypt, so shall they be sorely pained at the reports of Tyre. Pass ye over to Tarshish, how, ye inhabitants of the isle, is this your joyous city, whose antiquity is of ancient days? Her own feet shall carry her afar off to sojourn. So, prophetically speaking, the influence of Tyre was to take root again, sojourn, in Tarshish. The arguments over the years have been about where this prophetic Tarshish is located. What nation has all the attributes of Tarshish? The characteristics of Tarshish are as follows. As we've seen, a source of tin, silver, iron and lead, a Japhetic nation, a merchant nation, a maritime nation, a nation with colonies. Great Britain has been suggested as fitting a bill but so have Spain and some other places. Many of the arguments have been about which national region could have supplied the metals. One thing that started me thinking that it could have been Britain that supplied the metals, specifically Devon and Cornwall, was when I saw a map of the old mines on the border of Devon and Cornwall. A legend to the map, there's tin, silver and lead among the metals. Iron is also found throughout Devon and Corn Cornwall. What finally convinced me is that in 2019, there were headlines in the media showing that analysis of bronze, an alloy of copper and tin, artifacts from 13th and 12th century BCE Israel proved that the tin came from Cornwall. These are the headlines from the Times of Israel, 22nd of September, 2019. 
groundbreaking study, ancient tin ingots found in Israel were mined in England. Enigma of origins of Bronze Age Levant's tin supply solved through isotope and chemical composition analysis that shows 13th to 12th century BCE tin bars likely came from Cornwall. We're talking about tin from at least 3,000 years ago, the era, era of King David and Solomon. So for me, there is enough evidence that Tarshish is in fact Great Britain, a place far enough away from Israel to be the place that Job is trying to get to when he was trying to escape from the presence of God. This brings me back to the original interpretation of the young lines of Tarshish of Ezekiel 38, being the colonies of Tarshish. Britain's emblem has always been a lion, and the young lions would be her colonies, which have now grown up and become independent nations. In fact, in the First World War, the Parliamentary Recruiting Committee produced posters such as this one, with just this imagery. The destiny of Great Britain and her ex-colonies is intrinsically connected with Bible prophecy. These nations are separate from the European Union and other great power blocks in the world and have a different role and purpose in God's plans. That will be the subject of another video, if the Lord allows me to make it. If you are interested in Bible prophecy, you can find more information on the Prophecy Workshop website. Thanks for listening.